I guess the first step to learning how to use ECS is to spawn entities. And here I have 100,000 cubes. And I can move around like it's nothing. I'm running at 100 frames per second. If I spawn everything the traditional way, we get less than 10 frames per second. If I look in the code, the interesting part is entities, spawning game objects you should already know about. So here's a simple set of code that creates 100,000 blue cubes that you just saw. Even though what goes on underneath is radically different, from the outside it's not that complicated. You create an entity, assign a name, the name doesn't mean anything. You assign position values, rotation values, and render values. This might look a lot like a game object, where you're adding things like the transform, the rigid body, the renders to the game object. But if we look in the hierarchy, I'm going to spawn entities. And you don't see any of the cubes in the hierarchy. You can only see them in the entity debugger. So here we see the names and the data that we added, rotation and translation, or position. By default, Unity adds an entity with the time value. You don't have to worry about this. I probably shouldn't even say that we're adding data to the entities. Even though this looks a lot like what you would do to a game object, and it might even be easier if you see it that way, but an entity is clearly not an object. It's nothing more than an ID that lets you know which data are grouped together. Each of these is a struct. If you think about a typical game object on the other hand, it's going to have a bunch of components like rigid bodies, transforms, and some other scripts that you might have wrote. The big difference here is that the traditional way takes the OOP approach, object-oriented programming, whereas ECS is about data-oriented design. Usually in an OOP you would have a bunch of players as an object. Each object would have components that have some data or some functions and you would have a bunch of other players that are structured in the same way. When you want to get to a piece of data that you want, usually you would go through a tree-like structure. You go through a bunch of references, a bunch of abstracts and virtuals, and eventually you get to the data that you want. The cost of doing this might be close to nothing when you have one object, but when you have 100,000, that's when you start getting the massive frame drops. And depending on the object and how it's structured, even a few of them can cause frame drops. Even though each of the objects might be clearly defined, and in terms of writing scripts, that might be manageable, but you're jumping from memory to memory because data is scattered around everywhere. The other approach is putting emphasis on data first. The important part is how you save data and where. We don't know the inner workings of Unity, but in a general sense, data is lined up in a linear fashion in memory. So you might have translate values lined up here. You might also have rotational values all lined up, or render values, and so on. So already you're seeing massive design differences here. You know exactly where each of the data is stored, or at least the mathematical sequence that allows you to iterate through really quickly. If you understand the pattern, you know exactly which sets of data belong to which entity. And unlike the game objects, entities don't really have to hold anything. They just have IDs that allows them to track a certain set of data. And you know, certain entities don't have renders. But data is organized in a way that you don't have to jump through steps and references and jump from memory to memory. Instead, you just run right through. A single iteration here will save you so much more time than going through each object and going through all their elements. So you can kind of see why ECS is faster when iterating through many things. I'm just talking in general terms here, so please make sure to read the Unity documentation on this. You should also probably do some research on the general idea of data-oriented design. But anyways, back in the code, Things are not all that different from the old ways. For now, I would say don't get caught up too much with the entity manager and the world. In a similar way that you don't really ask about game objects and what a scene is, a world is just something that entities exist in, and every world has an entity manager that takes care of each of the entities. So in this video, I only talked about spawning an entity and linking data to it. I'm going to talk in more details in later videos, but for now, understanding how structure used or understanding what an entity is, is probably enough for the first step. As for converting my game to ECS, thoughts overall is still very experimental, so I'm not going to rush myself. I think it's going to be a very slow, incremental process. And that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and I have all the links below, so you can reach me or download this project yourself. Thanks for watching.
I'll see you next time.